And the third change was to section 22-15B2 regarding the appeal to mayor and council. There are two locations where there's reference to 30 days. Those were going to be changed to 45 days. So the mayor and council would have 45 days to render a decision. Is there a motion to introduce with those amendments? So moved. Second. Um, moved by Mr. Liverman and seconded by Mr. Miller. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Howard? Yes. Ms. Cromilla? Yes. Mr. Miller? Mr. Liverman? Yes. Ms. Butler? Yes. Mr. Simon? Yes. Um, the um, motion is approved, and the public hearing for this ordinance will be on July 14th, 2014. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Greg. Um, all right, the next ordinance for this evening is an ordinance by Princeton concerning the leaf branch and log collection program and amending the code of the borough of Princeton, New Jersey, 1974 and the code of the township of Princeton, New Jersey, 1968. Um, and I don't know, Greg or Lisa, can you walk us through this one? The changes are not really that extensive. Uh, the ordinance, it, when I say not extensive, it, the ordinance is based on the current township code section regarding the leaf branch and log collection program. And uh, the only substantive changes that were made were to recognize the consolidated municipality. And the idea behind this ordinance is to put into place uh, and actually codify the program that's already in place throughout the municipality because technically there are two ordinances in place regulating two different programs. And the program that's being actually uh, administered by the Public Works Department is what is codified here. So in terms of how this is going to be administered by Public Works, it's, it's going to be pretty seamless because this is exactly what they're doing right now. So it's no change in that respect. Right. Basically, they, I mean, the Public Works actually asked for this ordinance to be um, in introduced because they can't enforce the schedule. And if we're going to have a schedule, we need to be able to enforce it. Or right, it's because there's no work. schedule. The schedule that is in place in, under the township code is the township, and there's no more townships. So those districts or those sections are non-existent. And there's no section, uh, there are no sections by ordinance designated under the borough. So th what this is going to do is enable the Public Works Department to uh, create the sections and create the schedule. And then if there are any issues or problems, it can enforce, uh, it can enforce this ordinance. And if people are uh, in, in terrible violation of this ordinance, they can um, deal with those issues and, and potentially even issues complaints. Are there any questions on this one? I, I have a concern about process on this one. Okay. This, in my opinion, this should have come to the Public Works sub, uh, Committee before it came to Council, and it did not do so. And I, I would encourage this to be a work session for discussion, but I, I think that the Public Works Committee should also hash this out before we um, introduce it. I, I just have a real concern about the process and not, not having done that. Um, and in fact, I voiced that at our, at our meeting, and we said we were going to get the the ordinance, but we got it, I think, Thursday. I'm sorry, I, I have not had time since then to review it. Uh, and, and just going into the work session side of it, the, I have concerns about the, the schedule re is reflective of the township's former level of service. And one of the areas where we have taken heat in terms of whether consolidation is working or not is how well it's working with respect to the borough's former level of service, which was significantly higher, or perceived to be by many residents. And I just don't have a good sense yet of whether we're sort of meeting that promise. Well, I, I, 
I, I think we should, if you have that objection, we should yeah. vote on whether we can, I mean, I don't see why I take it to the public course. But I, I do think that there are two questions here. One is, what is the practice right now? We have a schedule, so it makes sense to um, put in place the ordinances that reflect the schedule that we are actually using. But the other question is whether we want to change the way we do the, you know, change our whole system of um, leaf and brush and including going back to the borough system. But that's a different question. I, I understand that. But just for example, the, the proposed ordinance has leaf pickup in the fall. We actually did leaf pickup this spring as well. Um, the proposed ordinance leaves the schedule up to the um, uh, the, the uh, director of, of INO with uh, 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 who reports to the, uh, with the approval of the administrator and who reports to council we've actually been approving the council has been approving the schedule the past couple of years in part because it's been such a, such a mm, I can talk such a thorny issue um, and, and right so, so I think we should take it back to the public okay, works so I would make this recommendation though is that the members of the public works committee should maybe huddle after this meeting because ideally um, I know that I've talked to Bob Huff. He was interested in presenting the 2015 schedules to us on July 28th. And so I just want to make sure that, um, you know, if things get pushed back, I mean, the problem with the schedules is exactly what Mr. Simon is saying. It's, you know, because there's a lot of community interest in it that I feel like it would be better for us to be voting on those in July rather than in August. Yet, if we don't vote on them in July, we have to vote on them in August or else, you know, we're pushing up against the end of the year and we can't distribute the schedules. So, it, there's a timing issue here too, but I think if we can meet and be in a position where we can introduce this at our next meeting, which is next Monday, um, or, the, or the meeting after that, then I feel like we haven't lost too much time. I, and I understand that. And that um, I, I do also, though, think that those, are, those can be decoupled. We've already approved two schedules without going through this ordinance reconciliation process. So I, I, I understand we'd like to get those in place. Um, that's true. But they, but they can be decoupled if we feel that there's a need to do so. Okay. Yeah, that's a decent point. Still, I think we should try to meet. Yes. Sooner rather than later. Okay. Um, I do, we don't need to vote to table it, right? We can just not because it hasn't been introduced. Correct. Correct. Okay. So we'll we'll table this to, well, until. I mean, it is on the agenda. Well, yes. Yeah, so I was going to ask the mayor if I had proposed making it a work session. So if anybody has any comments on it that we should take back under our advice, we can do so. Oh, well, that's fine too. I mean, do you do you want to? Well, I already made my comments. Okay. I just wanted to know. Is there anybody else who'd like to comment on it? Wait, to comment on the ordinance on, right now? Yes. I mean, especially if Public Works is I, going to be I, talking about it, we can take Jenny, help me out here, and, and maybe, Greg, you know this too. Part of um, that change that made the head of INO, it isn't that we wouldn't get the leaf and brush schedule, but if they, he wanted the flexibility that if the <laughs> schedule needed to change, that it didn't need to come to council. But I think we're talking not about a wholesale change in the schedule, but, you know, if the need arose to, you know, sort of on a, a storm or we're seeing that one street, you know, something has happened, that every minor change doesn't need to come to council. But I, but I think the intention was overall that we would have a leaf and brush schedule, you know, annually, but within that, well, once the schedule's Produced, they don't want to have to come for every small change. And, and uh, that's actually fine with me. What we did this year is we delegated it to the Public Works Committee. I don't really have a strong, I mean, I, I would expect the INO director to consult with the Public Works Committee anyway. But so, for example, I didn't see in here a commitment that, the, that was discussed extensively in the TTF, which is that um, uh, there will be brush pickup after a severe storm. But that is the current policy. I don't, I mean, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see it in the ordinance. And it, it seems to me that we should be uh, we should be memorializing some of the commitments that we've made over the course of this process. Y you may be right. I think they probably intended to do that and just didn't have it in the document. But that's uh, that's always been the the intention was to absolutely to do, 
do things like that, but it, it, it's not stated. And, and there's the authority to have additional pickups, such as after a storm. It just doesn't say that. So, but that can, that is something that can. But I think, I, I believe he makes a good point that that was added. always stated as part of our policy and part of our obligation that we would pick up after storms. So we probably do want to add that. I think it's a good idea to think about the, uh, the items such as th that after storm pickup. Other examples of, of when the schedule can be altered might be a good idea to put, uh, to put additional text into, so the public understands when that's going to be happening. And you still won't be taking away the flexibility because I think that's what the director of INO really needs is flexibility, but at least the minimum standards will be placed in here. That's a good idea. Is, is there a motion to table this pending review by the Public Works Committee? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Liverman and seconded by Mr. Simon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so um, Public Works will take a look at this one. Um, the final ordinance for tonight is an ordinance by Princeton concerning the Princeton Environmental Commission and amending the code of the borough of Princeton, New Jersey, 1974, and the code of the township of Princeton, New Jersey, 1968. And the issue here was um, whether we wanted to include two liaison positions, one from the health department and the other from the recreation department that had traditionally sat on um, the Environmental Commission. And well, we actually on. just decided, I mean, we just decided to um, take care of the um, rec, I mean, health. The, um, the health commission liaison, for, but, but postponed deciding about the recreation liaison. We'd like to admit the PEC might want to talk about that, but um, the, the health liaison was like a no-brainer, so we yep. just wanted to put that one in. And just okay. to just comment on that. on that, I did speak to Ben Stenz today about this, and um, the rec liaison to PEC was really uh, an outgrowth of uh, Jack Roberts was doing it, not someone who, not a volunteer, it was really a staff member. And I think, Jenny, you said it really didn't, you know, there, there really didn't seem to be a need to have a staff member there who was also attending the rec meeting the next night. And so um, while Ben was hoping to stay on the distribution list, he, you know, he reads the minutes and keeps up on it. It was a feeling that they don't necessarily need a liaison to PC. So I think we're fine just adding the health at this time. Okay. My, my only concern, and I would just say that it's really important for us to have communication among each other. So, you know, I know that with REC taking on more of the responsibility for the parks and for that being a big interest of members of the Environmental Commission to make sure that, um, especially the liaisons, do a good job communicating. So if there's things on the agenda where you invite somebody from REC when it is appropriate or vice versa. I mean, I know when I was liaison to the Environmental Commission, there was a lot of discussion about um, synthetic turf fields and what the environmental impacts of those might be. So again, like as a courtesy to have somebody from REC there to answer questions. Um, but I, you know, I think there's a lot of committees yeah. like that that have overlapping issues at, from time to time, yeah. but maybe not at every meeting. Yeah, right. and, and, and I think there might be some discussion on the PEC they might want to take up this. We didn't, we haven't had a meeting and discussed either of these. So there's a possibility that they might feel differently about the, the rec um, liaison. And in that case, we'll come back. Mr. Simon. But, uh, is there a reason why this position from health is uh, a liaison and not simply a voting member? The state law only allows certain seven members well, it used to be a voting member when the um, when it was a joint board. It was 11 members before consolidation, and then the, the change when when the consolidation happened, it went to a seven-member board. I don't think that the state law necessarily. I haven't looked at that to see if the state law precludes uh, the municipality from having a member come from another municipal body. I, it was my sense that it's just a small amount of members. It's only seven members. So if you're taking members from other bodies, then you're going to have less residents sitting on it. But I, I can't answer the question as to what, what the state law says on that. Well, well, I guess my proposal would be that, that we would expand the board if we were going to do that. That's what I'm just asking. I thought we, could, I thought we couldn't. That was the problem. I thought the state law 
limits the voting the number of voting members to seven. Let me see. Otherwise, yeah, I we think would definitely I, expand it if we didn't have. I, to. I think you're right, and I think seven would members was probably the joint. I apologize. The joint board was probably eleven members. Yeah. So, um, so you could. Actually, what you said. I think you can de you would only be limited to seven members. I think you could add a member of the health, the, the board of health, but that board of health member would take up a spot, one of the seven members. Okay. That was a question. Okay. So I, I don't. I, I would recommend that be a um, liaison position, non-voting, because it's also, I found, you know, we specified in one other case where um, it's a member of two bodies, and it's a it's a big commitment. It can sometimes be hard to find volunteers too to do that. So I think liaison just feels. Um, I think people feel less obligated to take on the work of the commission and to take on the work of two commissions is asking a lot of a volunteer, and I think it just makes it harder to find people. And then if you have the position vacant, then it's hard to find a quorum, and it leads to all sorts of problems. So. Mayor, I can just say that I think that's right, that um, from the Board of Health's perspective, there's been terrific um, coordination just having a liaison, a non-voting member. So I think that's fine. Okay. I apologize. The version that uh, uh, Jenny and I had discussed changing some of the language, and for some reason the language didn't show up on this version, regarding the, uh, the title, Section 12-6 alternates, should say liaisons, period and take out the language about sustainable principles just because this this section talks about three different liaisons and then the language under where it says the board of trustees of sustainable princeton um, it says the it should say the sustainable princeton member may attend meetings and participate in deliberations of the commission but shall not have the right to vote on matters before the commission and similarly the uh, last sentence of the the next paragraph would read the board of health member may attend meetings and participate in deliberations of the commission but shall not have the right to vote on matters before the commission jenny and i had talked about that and for some strange reason that, that the is wrong what version was sent no that's what so, I mean, it, it oh, do approximately you, says that. Here's, uh, here's maybe the electronic copy. It's slightly different, but we talked about taking oh. out the ex, ex officio language. Right. And that's Explicitly what. Explicitly take out the. Yes. Right. And then I, we made it consistent, the two paragraphs. So I apologize that, that. So you're recommending that we take out the ex officio? Yes. Okay. And just the. Um, yeah, and I can read that to you, what I just read to you again. The language is slightly different, just to take out the ex officio language and, and have the uh, language regarding the three liaisons mirror each other. Okay. You, you've just read it, so I don't. Okay. So that's, no, I don't need to read it again. Okay. Um, and are, is, are there any other um, comments or questions about this edition? Um, and if not, is there a motion with the. So moved. Could we have just. Second. We're having a technical difficulty. Okay. We just have. Okay. So we're taking out, taking out the ex officio language here. Otherwise, okay. it's the same. I mean, it's a similar concept. Right. It's it's been moved by Ms. Cromeller and seconded by Mr. Lieberman. Um, are you guys okay down there? She, she couldn't pull up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Madam Clerk, please read the vote. Ms. Howard. Yes. Ms. Cromeller. Yes. Mr. Miller. Mr. Liverman? Yes. Ms. Butler? Yes. Mr. Simon? Yes. Um, the motion passes. The ordinance is introduced in the public hearing for this ordinance will be on July 14th. Um, is there a motion to go into closed session? So second. Moved by Mr. Miller, seconded by Ms. Howard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you to the Code Review Committee, too. Yes, thank you. It's, it's funny because it seems like no matter how, there are all these things that come up, I can't believe we didn't notice the... Um